Proverbs chapter 14 and reading verse 19. I'm going to read through verse 22. There came there certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. Now y'all pay close attention right here. And having stoned Paul, they brought him out of the city, supposing he is dead. How be it, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. And came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And so I want to talk to you on this subject, one word, continue. Look to your neighbor, say, continue. Lord, we ask you to talk to our heart. Help us to receive the word, the seed. Let our heart be the kind of ground that when it settles upon, it will bring forth fruit. We ask you, Lord, we need you. We lean upon you. We depend upon you. And we can't live without your word. We give you praise and glory and honor. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. The reading of the word of the Lord. Today we enjoy many blessings and, and conveniences because of people who God had put into them a drive, a determination to continue. We enjoy the conveniences of light bulbs because there was a man named Thomas Edison. And Thomas Edison, he had one of those kind of determinations and one of those drives in him that would just keep on keeping on and keeping on. And he said out of 18,000 experiments, after 18,000 experiments, he achieved his goal and created the light bulb which we enjoy tonight. Amen. A man by the name of Jonas Salk discovered a vaccine called for polio. He kept on in spite of three years of setbacks, three years of failures, but yet the results of a man that said, I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on. Many, 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 many lives have been saved because of this man that said, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to throw in the towel. And of course, one of our late great presidents, Abraham Lincoln, he failed six times in trying for the political office. But he continued. He continued trying. He continued until he became the greatest president of the United States. I have this picture on my wall in there. Prayer at Valley Forge. Amen. <clears throat> nope, that's George Washington. I just now, it's like, no, that's George Washington I've got in my office. Amen. Albert Einstein, he said, I think and I think and I think for months and for years. And he said 99 times my conclusion is false. But the hundredth time, I'm right. I keep on and I keep on and I keep on. All of them 
had a drive in them, had a determination, saying, I will continue. When you read the book of Acts in the Bible, one of the most powerful messages to the church, to the church that was birthed in the book of Acts, that message is continue. Continue. The apostle Paul had been stoned. He had been dragged out of the city. He was left for dead. They thought he was dead. Acts 14 and 19, and there came certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people or who uh, uh, persuaded them that, 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 that we need to stone this man. And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. The Jews thought he was dead. The disciples thought he was dead. The people thought he was dead. But the next verse, when you read it, verse 20, Acts chapter 14 and 20, it begins with, how be it? How be it? The New King James translation translates that word as however. I'm going to read it. How be it, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and he came into the city the next day and then departed with Barnabas. While the disciples were standing around him thinking he was dead, they seen him. I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty much persuaded they had checked his pulse. They had felt for breath. But this man rose back up again and he began preaching again. How be it? He continued. He continued. He continued. Acts 14, 21, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples. And then what was the message? Exhorting them, continue, continue, continue in faith. Continue, and we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. The apostle Paul, he, we know he went through much persecution, but he kept getting back up and he would continue. He wouldn't quit. He wouldn't throw in the towel. He wouldn't say, I'm going to stop preaching this gospel. These people are trying to kill me. He kept continuing. And if they would stone him, he was laying there. They were persuaded he's dead. He would continue. He would come back up and he would continue. And then his message to those followers and those disciples was you got to continue. You got to continue. You got to continue no matter what you go through. Whatever tribulation you face, you just keep going until you make it unto the kingdom of the almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whatever it takes continue whatever tribulation you have to go through whatever hardship you have to go through don't stop don't give up continue until you make it to the kingdom of God 12 chapters later after apostle Paul had weathered many storms of hardship and tribulation had been stoned had been beaten had been abused had been cast into prisons, had been challenged, had been sabotaged, had been threatened, had escaped death many times, had been buffeted by the devil, faced health problems, persecution, financial struggles. Then again, he made a powerful statement. In Acts, the 26th chapter, 22nd verse, he said, having therefore obtained help from God, I continue unto this very day witnessing both 
to the small and to the great. I continue, I continue, I continue, I continue because I have obtained help from the almighty God and I continue as a witness, as a witness to both the small and to the great. Amen. Look to somebody around you and say, I continue. Amen. I continue with help in the help of the almighty God. Out of all of the books of the New Testament, beginning with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, you just begin reading all the way through. Out of all of the books There's only one book that has no ending. Matthew, it ends. You can go look for yourself with amen. Putting that final, finalizing it, amen. Mark, it ends with amen. Luke, it ends with amen. John, it ends with amen. When you get to the book of Romans, it ends with amen. Get to 1 Corinthians, it ends with amen. 2 Corinthians, it ends with amen. Letting you know there's an ending here. Galatians ends with amen. Ephesians ends with amen. Philippians, amen. Colossians, amen. 1 Thessalonians, amen. 2 Thessalonians, amen. 1 Timothy, it ends with amen. Second Timothy, it ends with amen. Titus ends with amen. Philemon ends with amen. Hebrews ends with amen. James ends with amen. First Peter ends with amen. Second Peter ends with amen. First John ends with amen. Second John ends with amen. Third John ends with amen. Jude ends with amen. And the book of Revelation ends with amen. Every book in the New Testament has an ending except one. And if you look at the book of Acts, there's no ending. Hallelujah. What are you preaching tonight? I'm telling you, continue. Continue. This has to continue. What is going on must continue. That message has to continue. Baptism in Jesus' name has to continue. The infilling of the Holy Ghost has to continue. The message, the doctrine, the preaching, the truth has to continue. This has no ending. There is no benediction. There is no the end. There is no to God be the glory at the end. There's not a good old amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The last words of the last chapter, and I'm going to read the last four verses of the book of Acts. Acts 28, verse 28. Be it known therefore unto you the salvation of God, it is sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. And then it just leaves you hanging. And the reason being is it is to be continued. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the birth of the church. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The message where the disciples stood together as 12. uh, The 12 chosen by God uh, to preach the message on the day of Pentecost. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins um, and receive uh, the gift uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, That's the gift of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. And they continued. And it's still to be continued. Hallelujah. Continue. Continue in this. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The message is to be continued. 
Continue in the doctrine. Continue in the grace of God. Continue in the faith. Continue in prayer. Continue in faith, grounded, settled, and unmoved. Continue in love. Continue in truth. The salvation message in the book of Acts did not end. It is to be continued. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Look to your neighbor one more time. Say continue, continue. Amen. Continue. I know going through hardship. I know there's a lot of things going on right now. And it seems like Christianity is under attack. But no matter what, continue. The message to the church, to the born again, to those filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, continue. Every time you get knocked down, get back up again. Uh, come on, somebody. Don't stop. Don't quit. Keep going. You have something inside of you. Greater is he that is inside of us uh, than he that is in this world. Uh, we have got something inside of us uh, that gives us an ability through an authority of the name of Jesus to continue. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. The message of the disciples becoming apostles of the Lord, it's continue. Amen. When we go into all of the stories throughout the word of God, the message of Jacob becoming Israel and the father of 12 tribes of Israel is continue. The message of Joseph, sold as a slave by his own family. Right. Hello? Right. Abused by his own family. Messed up in the head, friend. He's sitting there, sold out by his own brothers. Ends up in prison. Yet he became prime minister of Egypt. It's a message. Continue. Continue wherever you're at. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, whether it's coming from your own family, whether it's coming from somebody else, whether it's coming because of whatever's going on. There were many things that happened in his life. Betrayal, it was all you name it, it's there. Pain, all of the things, rejection, it's there. But continue, just continue in God. Continue in the help of God. The message of King David, a shepherd boy, becoming king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all know his story? When the prophet came to the house, got a, there's somebody here I'm supposed to be anointing as king. David wasn't even among them. Father didn't even think this is it had nothing to do with king material. He's out there with the sheep. But it's a message. Continue. And then, of course, in spite of King Saul, 15 years. Yeah, we got the great story of David and Goliath. David's Goliath fell to the ground. But do you know 15 years he had to deal with King trying to kill him because of jealousy? 15 years. Just keep on keeping on. Just continue. Don't quit. Don't stop. Just continue. Just continue. Well, it's been four years and I've been dealing with this. Continue. Make it five. Well, it's been six years. Make it seven. Just keep going. Continue. Keep going. Don't lose your faith. Keep your faith. Keep your faith in God. Keep your faith in the hand and power of God. Amen. That, the message about Virgin Mary giving birth to Jesus Christ in spite of all the hardship and rejection. We read these stories, but we do not understand what these people had to go through. 
mean, continually. Carrying child. You know everybody's doubting, questioning. But here she is, a virgin, carrying this child. It was a message in, in spite of all the hardship and in spite of all the rejection and in spite of everything else, just continue because God's with you. God's going to help you. The message of the New Testament church, the born again believers, it's continue. Continue in spite of everything, in spite of all that you face, in spite of all the mockery of making people making fun of you because of the life you live, your dedication, your commitment, your love for the things of God. Just continue, continue. That is our message. That's the message to the church. Just keep going. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 24. In verse 13, Jesus said, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Just keep on. Just keep on. Your book is being written right now. Our books isn't here. Yours is being written right now. The pens, doing the writing, what your life is, what you're enduring, what you're going through, your stand that you're holding on, and you keep getting back up every time you fall. Just keep on, keep enduring until the end, because the same shall be saved. Amen. Endure. Endure all the false teachings. Endure all the hardships and tribulations. Endure the storms of life. Endure the temptations. They're coming all the time. Satan is coming up with things, things that our youth and young people deal with today. Church, we look, I look back in my day, you know, all the problems we had, you know, spit wads and chewing gum. I got pops. Our kids don't get pops no more. I got pops. It messed my head up, didn't it? Messed my life up. Look at me. Oh, I got pops. And then I'd get home. My mama wasn't them people that say, oh, you, we're going to go up there and we're going to deal with that teacher. No, friend. My mama said, come on. You're getting a spanking. That changes the way you treat authority. Come on. I'm just telling you, these are things that help boys like me. Amen. Mama didn't say, oh, you poor boy, we're going to go up there and have a talk with them people. My mama would look at me and say, you probably deserved it and you still need some more. And she was right, because I know all things I did that I didn't get spankings for. I needed a whole lot more. I needed about 40, 100 pops a day. Whew. I didn't, the ones pops that I didn't like was the ones in gym from the coach. Those pops, them coaches, man, they just something about them, you know. They just act like they enjoyed it. Mm. Oh, I remember. I remember. That. You never forget that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that just kind of straightens you up, gets you living right, gets you respect and authority. Hey, Amen. We got a problem today. Well, oh, do we have a problem? We got a problem. We got to pray. The temptations that our youth face today and the way that Satan's got all of the channels to get to them, all their stuff and their technologies and all the things. And I'm telling you, but through everything, we got to endure. Jesus tells us, take up your cross. And he said, follow me. Take up your cross. Amen. Now, I don't know what comes to your mind when he says that, but I'll tell you what don't come to my mind. I don't see a pillow-shaped cross. I think of the old hard wooden cross that Jesus was crucified on. 
that didn't feel good. It wasn't comfortable. Amen. God never said the church is supposed to be comfortable. He said, we got we to be like good soldiers. We got to endure hardship. We got to endure all of those things that come our way and keep on going. Because we got to get to heaven. And if we're going to, we got to take our cross and we got to follow Jesus. We got to carry our cross. And yes, I know we're all human. I'm human just like everybody in this room. There are days we're going to be dragging our crosses. And there are days we're going to be pushing our crosses. And there are going to be days we're sitting on our crosses because we're so burnt out and exhausted. But whatever you do, don't let go of that cross. You just keep on getting back up again. And you just keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on until you hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You didn't quit. You didn't sell out. You didn't turn around. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You kept going. You continued until the very end. Amen. I, I have a, a thing here that I've, I go to every now and then. As y'all know, I've got a bag of just things I collect over time. And this is one of them. Y'all have heard it before. It was a story about a lady. And this lady was sitting in her car. And the car was stalled out. And she was trying to get it started. She was working on it. And she was stressed out. And the fellow behind her was continually honking his horn. Don't you love those folks? Your stress level is already way up here. Y'all know that's the kind of people when you have your blinker on and you're really needing quickly to get into the other lane and they don't let you. And your blood pressure rises really high. And you think, man, don't y'all care I'd have been killed? Nope. Honking the horn, this poor lady's trying her best, is frantically trying to start her car. He's honking and honking and honking and honking and honking. And finally, the woman gets out, walks back there and says, If you'll work on my car, I'll honk your horn for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Just keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. Matthew 24, 46, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, will find so doing. Amen. When that Lord, when he comes back for his church and he comes back for his people, he's coming back for those that are enduring and they're still going they hadn't quit, they hadn't thrown in the towel, they hadn't gave up, and they're continuing. They're continuing in the faith. They're continuing in the doctrine. They're continuing in love. They're continuing in the power of the Almighty God. And they're enduring everything this life throws at them and everything the devil throws at them. But listen to me. One day there's going to be a change in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. We're going to be changed. This corruptible is going to put on incorruption. And the devil can't touch you ever again. He can't mess with you ever again. Oh, hallelujah, what a day that's going to be. What a day it's going to be for the saints of God that was enduring and kept on keeping on. They kept their fork. They didn't give up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Amen, amen. Uh, that just put something in, what time? It's 8.14. Come on, musicians, I'll get, I'll get ready. That just, I've, I've, I've got a fork sitting in my office right now with those words on it. But it, it, there was a story about that lady, and she was talking to the pastor, and she said, Pastor, she said, whenever I die, I want you to do something that's a little bit different, a little strange, but I want you to put a fork in my hand. And so when everybody was passing by, Seeing this lady, she's sitting there with a fork in her hand. 
What's, what's the deal with the fork? Well, every time we get together with our family reunions and our potluck dinners, we get together and, and you know, the best part of it all is right there at the end. They say, keep your fork. She said, that means all those desserts we've been looking at, all that good, you know, you almost want to start there first. When you see all the, man, all this cooking and everything looks so good and all the cakes and the pies and all the good stuff. You know, they used to say, keep your fork. Because now that means that the best is coming. You just tell them I kept my fork. The best has now come. Hallelujah. Come on. We're going to pass through this old world. We're only passing through. This isn't our home. We're only passing through. Just keep going. Keep going. Just keep on going. Don't let the world trip you up. Just keep on going. Keep serving the Lord. Keep living for God. Keep the faith. Hold on to the truth. Hold on to the doctrine. You just keep loving people no matter how bad they treat you. You just keep on keeping on. Romans 2 and 7, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Hallelujah. That's where life is. And that's the life we're living for. Amen. That which God has brought to us. Galatians 6 and 9, don't grow weary and well-doing, for in due season you're going to reap. Just don't stop. Just keep going. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 13, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Just keep on. Just continue. Will you stand to your feet right now? Why don't you lift up your hands and just make it known unto the Lord, God, I'm, I'm still here. Hallelujah, I'm, I'm keeping on. I've rose up again. Amen. I'm, I'm standing again. Hallelujah. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.